You know, Windows 7, to me, I, I've dealt with a lot of personal computer operating systems over the years from CPM all the way up and tried all the flavors of Unix and Mac and various. Windows 7 is by far the best PC operating system I've ever used. And I, I think people will be pleasantly surprised once they move to it. One of the questions everyone always has is if they have some legacy XP apps. And, and Windows 7 has a couple ways... or yeah. Some ways to deal with that. What well, and, and there's a couple ways. And, and to reiterate your point, I always I always tell the, the fun story is that people just load Windows 7 and things just get faster. It's just one of the things they built into the OS. They really did their homework to make sure that we gave a really good experience yeah. and, and really took Vista to the next logical level, um, which was a great system. From a compatibility perspective, um, there are a couple ways you want to do this. First off, we have some of the tried and true methods, you know, uh, that are the Jedi mind trick that you can put on the properties. It's like... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's not Windows 7, it's Windows 95, Service yeah. Pack 5, or whatever it happens to be, right? We can put those tricks on the executables and see if we can fool it that way. Um, if that doesn't work, um, and what's funny about Windows 7 is if it detects an app that won't run natively, it'll step you through that wizard and ask you some really interesting questions about, <laughs> hey, did this work before? What environment? Yeah. What resolution? And it'll try to answer those and fill out that properties for you. So, you know, for, for folks that aren't in the IT world that run in this, makes it real easy. The other way to do it, and I think a lot of people forget about, it, is the application compatibility toolkit. And this creates what are called shims. Now, shims are just like when you're hanging a door. You, hang, you, hang a, you put a shim in to level the door out. Shims in, a, in, in an XP or a Windows 7 environment are basically register settings that help make that app work. Once again, it's to trick the app to think, hey, you really are running on XP. In reality, they're running on 7, sometimes the compatibility. Now, if all that fails, and this is why I mentioned this last, <laughs> In Windows 7, you actually have the ability for a free download called XP Mode. It's a virtualized copy of XP, um, I believe Service Pack 3, 32-bit version. So even if you have 64-bit 7, you can still run this. And it's a free virtualized copy where you can run your apps. And the native integration of the apps running inside there, you can actually put a shortcut for that app on your local desktop. And when you double-click on it, it'll fire up. It'll look like a window. It'll be just like any other app that you've used in the past. You know, it's, uh, you mentioned 64-bit and 32-bit. I think that's one of the other things that the average yeah. user is, is confused about. They don't know which they need or why would, they, yeah. why would someone consider 64-bit. From a standpoint of, and, I, and I've done a lot of talks on this, from an operating system standpoint, 64-bit allows you to get into better memory management of the systems. Our laptops now are getting bigger and bigger and more and more memory. Our systems are getting bigger and bigger. I mean, it's not uncommon to hear a laptop having 8 gigs of RAM or 16 gigs of RAM or even a local system having that much memory. Well, with 32-bit computing, you run into some very technical limits right around the 4-gig mark. Um, what 64-bit does is it basically gets rid of that image. And everybody thinks that it's, you know, 64-bit, well, it's just twice as fast. No, uh, you got to look at the measurements. You know, if I could run uh, processes on a 32-bit, it was 2 to the 32-bit amount of work I could do. With 64-bit, it's 2 to the 64-bit of how much work you can do. So it's not just twice as fast. It's exponentially faster. From that environment, I think a lot of people uh, don't know that they're probably running 64-bit hardware. And running the 64-bit OS just gives you better flexibility. And I think that the thing that confuses people is like, well, I'm running 64-bit. That means, uh, you know, I won't be able to run my older third and three applications. And it's exactly, that's the opposite. That's not true. 32-bit apps are supported on a 64-bit OS, and they should run perfectly fine. The only time you lose that compatibility outright with 64-bit is if you have 16-bit apps. And Dan, quite frankly, I haven't seen a 16-bit app in so long, I don't even know yeah, if they're around yeah. anymore. So from that standpoint, running a 64-bit OS is going to get you better performance, um, better reliability, better scalability. It's going to allow your applications to run smoother in their environment, give them better memory allocation. Um, and, and realistically, you know, I, the, the, I began to talk about why 64-bit. Um, you know, the talk started with just accept it, it's here, deal with it. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, there are some real technical benefits for the 64-bit architecture over 32-bit. Right. You know, I think the, the two key points we would want visitors or viewers to yeah. take away today, first is it's okay to keep those old T-shirts. Yes. <laughs> you know, I've got a classic Bell by Air Galofton T-shirt from 94 that I'm, I'll put in a safe, a safe deposit box if I have to. And the other thing is it's probably not okay to stick with XP anymore. It's, it's 10 years old. It's Windows 7. We could get into all the benefits and all, but just, just because it wasn't designed for the yeah. way people work today. Yeah, and that's one of the things I think, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, we don't talk a lot of the features, but Windows 7 runs faster. It's more reliable. It's going to run those apps 
that we want to run, and it's built for that reliability. I mean, just if you if you get a chance to play with seven, you want to take a look at it, and you know, just like the running shirt, you know, just like the shirts. I had this old workout shirt, and you know, there's better material out there. I have the wicking shirts when I'm running. I don't feel like yeah. I'm sweating no yeah. more. So Windows Seven, I look at it that perspective that it's just it, it's going to give you a better computing environment, um, and it's going to give you a more robust. It's going to allow you to take advantage of the, the great applications that are coming out there. I mean, there's so many great stuff coming that XP is not going to be able to handle the way it should. So. All right, today we're with Matt Hester, IT Pro Evangelist at Microsoft, who wants the old T-shirt but wants you off of XP. <laughs> so we'll see you next time, Matt. Thanks. Thank you, Dan.